of what? I don't know. I mean, I'm always waiting for a Best Picture nomination, Best Director, Best Writer, Best Smile. <laughs> I love 
love it. <laughs> and what was the premise or the story behind the, the story, Splinter? Uh, Splinter's about a plane that never lands, and on that plane is a single passenger, a 10-year-old boy, who may or may not be the source of all conflict in the world, and so what happens when the plane that can never land is lands? Exactly. I did get a chance to screen it, and I did enjoy it, so that's all I have to say for that one. <laughs> and then you came down with... Yeah, well, I did. I came down with a couple of my performers, my Yutide Badaki and Tiffany Smith, who are both in the film, and my a couple of my producers, Kyle Smithers and Carrie Finn, who are getting snacks. Okay, so on the plane, yeah. was that a set or were you actually on a plane? We lucked out and we found a facility in Hollywood that specializes in plane materials. Okay. That's all they did. Huh? And so we were able to move in there for three or four days and kind of build out what we needed to build, but also they had chairs. They had, this, they had everything. <laughs> That's, that's really hot. Thank you for sharing. Mm -hmm. So you guys came down. I know you, you got a little time to go to the bathroom or whatever. Mm -hmm. yeah. But if you want, I'll meet you back out here. I can see it on the screen. Is that okay? Outstanding. Thank All you. Right. Thank you so much. Good evening. Uh, no, this afternoon. This good afternoon. I'm standing here with the writer and the no, creator. the creator, director. Yes. Uh, and producer yes. of the movie or the, the film, The Savior. And I have to say, being from Chicago, watching this film, I watched it three times. It blew me away the first time <laughs> I had to step away. Yes. First, I want to say thank you for sharing that with us. Um, and yes. could you give everyone a, a premise of the movie? Well, the movie uh, is actually a project I've been working on for about nine years now. So, it's been, so I had it in the works for like seven years, and uh, we shot it in the seventh year, and now we're in the ninth year, so we, we, we're moving forward. But uh, it actually chronicles the prelusive years of the Nation of Islam. So it's the actual inception of the Nation of Islam, where Elijah Poole met WD for Rob. Thank you, that's what I'm trying to get out of. So thank you. I, like I said, I'm from Chicago. I have a lot of Muslim friends. I've never, had, I, I mean, I got some that are really close to Elijah Muhammad. I've never heard this story before, so that was just great. It's a time period piece as well. I just want to commend you on the periods. And you said this took over nine years to get it. Well, yeah, to, seven years, seven years, which is a significant number. So it took yeah. seven years, and then we shot it. So we found a guy that almost like an exact replica of W.D. Farad, you know, so we, we cast it well, you know, I, I tried my best, but it's actually a full length project where it could be a TV show. So I have other, it's, I have other scripts uh, that are, um, I have a feature, and we did a short. You know, I sat on it for seven years, we've been working the kinks out, you know, so, and then we, a full length show, like nine episodes. So what else can we, look forward to seeing coming in the future from you? Uh, just watch out. I, I, I want to make projects that shake the world, you okay. know, that cause people to think, that give people inspiration, you know, don't want to sound too cliche, but these projects that's up here, it's going to start some shit. <laughs> I am looking forward to that. I like things that make me think yes, and pay attention. Yes, I love to pay attention to that. I just want to welcome you, Thank you. Um, um, to the film festival, first and foremost, and hopefully we'll see you again oh, later on. Oh, definitely. On the definitely. Definitely. We'll be here. We'll be here. Our, our, our movie shows on Saturday, so some of the cast hopefully will be here. The people that work behind the scenes, like my other producers, should definitely be here. So. I look forward to meeting them. I do, I do. I get them on this carpet as well. <laughs> yes. Well, thank you so much for taking thank the time you. to speak with me. Appreciate I will it. see you soon. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Hey, well, good afternoon. I'm here with Dr. James J. Williams, and he is the uh, wait, director, executive producer, and director. It's okay, so Executive producer and director. Uh, rising above the frame of the document. 
And I just want to say thank you for sharing your prayer with us. It's been my honor. And thank you for your service Great as girl. well. And so how long did it take you to go through this documentary and get it together? Great question. So from 2021 and 2022, I filmed all over the United States of every individuals who served. And then of course the hardest part is editing. So we just completed December of 2023 and I'm here to share this to show the world. All right, well thank you, I appreciate it. Now what was the the what's the best way to explain it? The vast years of everyone that you interviewed. Good question. We had 25 years, 30 years. We even had those that served 42 consecutive oh, years in the army. Oh, I didn't think that was possible. Yes. <laughs> and of course, serving 40 years, you get 100% of your base pay when you retire. You should, as you Absolutely. should, instead of fighting for it for four or five years after you finish. Facts, so, yes. facts. Um, so, what made you come up with the premise for this documentary? Again, great question. So I am a retired Chief Warrant Officer 5 in the Army. I served 31 years. My dissertation topic was on African American men who look like me who served as Chief Warrant Officer 5. And the premise behind that was I was stationed at the Pentagon. That was my last duty station. And I had someone come up to me and say, wow, you're Chief Warrant Officer 5. In the Army, the Chief Warrant Officer 5 is considered a uniform. That's a very pinnacle rank. But the person that asked me looked like me. So I thought, wow, this must be a rare opportunity for people to look like me. Right. So instead of using my own bias, I sought to interview others that looked like me, African American men. And that became my dissertation, which defended, which allowed us to interview Dr. James Williams before you today. Well, I appreciate it, and I'm glad to be among you, just in your in your arm. That's it. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, so with all of that being said, what else can we expect from you in the future? Well, right now, I'm just showcasing the film throughout the film festivals. This was exhausting work. My son is now a freshman in college, so that tells you I had to miss a lot of his activities during his yeah. junior and senior year in high school. Uh -huh. uh, but now that I'm done, I'm going to showcase the film and see where it takes me. Okay. I will say this is a story that needs to be told because too often, African-American stories are not told. And these stories are American stories. And as taxpayers in the United States, you guys pay for us. Yeah. We hear of sergeants, majors, we hear of colonels, we hear of generals, but no one knows about the Army War Officer. So I hope this film inspires and educates people just exactly what Army War Officers do for the military. Well, thank you, and I just want you to know you did educate us, that some of the screeners, we learned a lot. I know I did. I accomplished my goal. Yes, thank you, you very did. much. Thank you so much for joining me on the carpet. I look forward to talking to you after your show. Thank you. Watch that film, folks. Watch that film. Please take it, please take it, girl. Oh, no, I was recording now. I like that. You know? <laughs> I'll take all of that. Remember back in the 80s? Come on now. Not no one. Good, e good evening and welcome to the Las Vegas Film Festival. This is our 11th year and I am here with the writer, executive producer, director. I got it all. Yeah. Of letters from a battlefield. Of the battlefield. From the battlefield. From, from the battlefield. Yes. So just watch it on the screen. <laughs> I'm sure. How was it? I gotta let her go first. <laughs>
more proud of my friend, my high school friend Jude Pago, and my high school friend Andre Jones, um, and Trey, the video guru, who did an amazing job editing this yes, piece. Uh, I'm just, I, I moved beyond at everything, and I, I definitely feel the spirit of my father with me. That's awesome, and I'm going to ask how did you two come together, but you already answered that from school. Right, right, but before, from what she said, I have to say something about, it was so much fun watching her and her reaction. Because, yes, I know the story, but this moment tonight, I was like, yeah, we'll, we'll go check it out, you know, it'll be nice. But when I got here, I was like, where is this excitement and nervousness coming from? And, and, and it really, that helps us tip our hat off to, um, the Las Vegas Black Film Festival because it's the first place it aired publicly. It's a world premiere tonight. World premiere. Yeah, world premiere. <laughs> but you made us feel like it was a world premiere. And I want to say to Michelle and to all of you that work with her, thank you so much. No, thank you. We appreciate you. Thank you for taking the time to go through that. And just for you. So, like, when you first heard the video, I, I watched it. Did you have to retake? Or we genuinely saw her listening for the very first time. Because the tears were there. No, so. For me. Yeah, so yes. I, I listened to his tapes the first time. Uh, that was 27 years ago. Okay. So, like, you know, so this movie really is a long time in the making. The book came out 15 years ago. Yeah. That I listened to the tapes and read the letters 27 years ago. So it has had a life, right? I mean, as all projects do. But, um, yeah. <laughs> and, and to give you an outline, my wife and I, we will be living in Colorado, where she lives, but we haven't seen each other in years. Eventually, she opened an Airbnb, and we went to spend a weekend there. Okay. And while we were just talking, and we thought she's renting the spot, she'll be gone, we won't see her. We're hanging out, and she starts telling me the story. And what really was shocking me about her story was, though she's, she's white, I'm black, she's female, I'm male, we have a similar background, coming from another country and adapting to America. She starts talking and tells me this story, and I'm going, this is a documentary, this is a film, this is a TV series. I couldn't believe it. And then, and then did you see all that? It's like, okay, we're done. Yes. No. And then, wait, wait, wait. There's more. <laughs> okay, we're done. Okay, and then, so there were so many, and I, to, and I told her we had to do it. So then what we did is, I said, let's do this. I put in a call to our director of photography, Andre. Okay. He went to high school with us, you know, and we flew him in. We did the initial interview of Jacqueline. I said, just tell me the story from beginning to end. Then we did, then we sat her and her husband together. That was another interview. Right. Then we came back a month later with her mom and her son. So this, these interviews happened over probably six months. Oh. Every time we did an interview, we were like, we need to get another one. We need to get another one. So, but as far as her, it was just shocking talking. It was just her telling me the story and me letting her do it as much as possible until one time she told me, when you ask me a question, let me answer you. <laughs> <laughs> and Audrey was like, yeah, you're cutting her off, you're cutting her off, man, you're cutting her off. But it was, because it was so intriguing, she'd say something and I'd want to talk right away, like, and what happened? She'd be like, well, let me, let me tell you. So, it was, it was natural takes, they were natural takes, okay. it wasn't rehearsed. We had to do some voiceover, but for the most part, it's just her telling the story, and, and, and that story touches you, I don't care who you Right, it, 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 it touched me, and I just wanted to say thank you. I applaud you. It's great. My, my dad served in Vietnam, so oh, I'm familiar with the, the tape. Yes, yes. And I get identified a lot, okay. except I had my dad who did. But to hear the tapes, and then I can see, you know, my dad's photos. I can remember stuff like that. So thank you so much, though. I love it. Thank you so thank very you. much. And can for I give just a last shout out to yes. my mom, Ruth? Yes. It's going to be 94 in two weeks. Amen. Yep. And I am so grateful for you, Mom, for letting me tell this story. And the friends like uh, Mike Love, who you know, not only interviewed, but also gave the rights to the his song, Make Love Not War, John Stamos, yes. for narrating 
course, President Clinton, that's pretty darn cool. Yeah, so, uh, and to well, all my friends. Well, with, with President Clinton, I, I didn't have time to hang to with him too long. <laughs> we gave him a few minutes. Okay. <laughs> and, and, and really, this project wouldn't be possible without all the friends who invested in this project over the last you know, 20 years, right? First to make the movie, and then the documentary, so I owe them a debt of gratitude, and I owe you some money as soon as we sell this project. Okay. <laughs> it's coming. Money, 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 money. It's coming. It's coming. Anyway, thank you so much, Mel. No, Thanks thank to you. Michelle and everybody who yes. put this on. This yes. is thank you. Night I know you got a couple of nominations for Sunday, so good luck. We do. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank and you. we will leave it later. Yes. All right. All right. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Director? Yes, writer and director. Of Toxicity. How did you like seeing your film? Oh man, it was amazing. Just uh, I want to thank the Las Vegas Black Film Festival for allowing us to come out and show this film. Um, this film means a lot to me. Uh, this film has opened a lot of doors for myself. And you know, I just think it's a, it's a story that needs to be told. It's a story that has been told before, but we just put a fresh twist on it. You did. You know, put a fresh twist on it. And ultimately, the movie is just about how you have to break away from toxic relationships, toxic friendships, uh, toxic work situations, and even toxic family life in order to become the best version of yourself. How you have to learn to love yourself before you can truly learn to love anybody else. Amen. You are absolutely correct. Thank you, thank you. So how long did it take you to film it? Uh, we shot the movie in about six days. Shut up. Shut up. Uh-uh. For real? Nah, yeah, yeah. Nah, Even the flashbacks? Yeah, well, yeah. We shot in about six days. Okay. Uh, that was probably one of my best or favorite parts the of the flashbacks. movies was the flashbacks. Yeah, I love the flashbacks. We actually, uh, so we shot the, well, I, I wrote the script, and then I went back and added the flashbacks to give it even more meaning and to show where, uh, you know, because a lot of the people might, right, a lot of people <laughs> might watch the movie and say, man, that dude Corey, man, he let that girl run all over him. But it was the fact that he had never really experienced real love, you know, as a child. And sometimes when you don't experience love, you look for it in the wrong places. This is so that was, that's what was going on with my man's story. Yeah, that's absolutely correct. I just want to say thank you. Thank you. They're holding upstairs for us. Oh, you know? nice. Upstairs. Um, so the... Come on, so. Zay. Come on, Zay. Come on, Zay. Come on, Zay. Look at him. He's so popular. He's so popular. Look at him. He's over here getting hugs and signing checks and kissing babies. Okay. For president. For president. For president. That's, that's, that's the mayor right there. That's the mayor right there. Come on, get in the middle of the mayor. Come on. Come on. Give me that mic. So how did it feel to see you up on the screen? It was a blessing. I'm just blessed. I'm so thankful for just having a wonderful director, Felix, business you come partner. Over, oh, my bad. I'm coming to that. Hold on. Let me get a little. Yeah, just a little. My uh, business partner as well as a friend. Just to do it with somebody who I respect and admire their craft. It's just been the whole blessing. This whole process has been phenomenal. Um, do you eat cereal like that? <laughs> you know what? I, I didn't eat cereal in years. <laughs> like, one day I just stopped eating cereal and then, you know? You <laughs> can't <laughs> eat it. I was like, they only seen that baby cereal through the whole movie. But anyway, I just want to say thank you so much for your prayer. Thank you for sharing it. Thank you for taking the time to even submit it. We are in awe and everybody, I, I actually interviewed a couple of people walking out and they enjoyed it. They threw their thumbs up and everything. So I just want to say thank you. I appreciate it. Good luck on Sunday. I think you got six nominations. Somewhere, yeah. Somewhere, Somewhere up there. there. So uh, hopefully you get one of them yeah, at least. Yeah, one. I'll take, take one. I'll I, I <laughs> take, take one. I'll take one. I'll take it however many, Pleasure. however many we get. Just, it's, man, all I got to say is glory to God. We, I feel like we're anointed to be here. And we're just taking back territory. We're going to change the whole industry. That's what I'm talking about. We're filling the town. All oh, right, man. That's what I'm talking yeah. about. Well, thank you, gentlemen, for taking the time to speak with no, me. Thank you. No, thank you. Thank you. I'm really saying thank you. No, you know thank that. you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, hold on, hold on. You got 
that out of her. Come here real quick. Oh, come she on. Played, come on, uh, you in come on, now? you in this? Uh-uh, come on in here. Come on around. Yeah, she, uh, come on. I forget. She played Shantae. Shantae. Yeah, she was Shantae that told, told him, uh-uh. Uh, what, what, what did he say? Uh, uh, he said, I'm sorry. He said, she said, don't be sorry, be better. Yeah, better. That's what Don't be sorry, be better. Let them know something about that. Hey, how did you like seeing yourself on the film? I'm going to move on my, on my screen, the rapper. Oh, it's a film. I love who I work with. I love my cast. I love my director. Like, I feel like we are like a real big family. So it's always wonderful work with them, but it's also like nerve-wracking and exciting and exhilarating and like everything when you see yourself on film. It's like, what could I have done better? What could I not have done? Well, you, you guys did it. Your chemistry, you oh. your crew chemistry was yeah, just yeah. perfect and it, it played out on the screen so we could see that. So well, you don't you. even have to worry about it. And when it comes to that, that's family. Family makes you feel all of those all emotions yeah. all the time. Yeah. Yeah. So, so thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me. No worries. I'm sorry I'm a little shy. It's okay. Uh, Get used good. to it. Yeah. Thank that you guys. Is you breaking you in. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, thank you. Uh, we're waiting upstairs for you guys. You got somebody else want to come on over? Yeah, but actually, we have
just walked with me. And she saw them all, and she has such a great heart. And she worked so hard. I tell you, she was editing and all kinds of stuff. Um, because once again, it's hard to get someone to really want to work all those types of stories. Right. And when it comes to political stuff and the things that I do as it relates to medical malpractice, nobody really wants to hear it. But the world needs to understand where we're living and that there are people out there that are fighting for it. It is, yes. it is. So I want you to say something, sweet oh, baby. Oh, <laughs>
So that that would be working with Susie. Uh, currently, uh, not to jump over here, but we are shooting a film called Vegas Traffic right now. It's a feature film here in Las Vegas. Uh, it is literally uh, Sound of Freedom meets Training Day. And uh, it's all about child trafficking. And we are almost done with it. Uh, we should be done by June. Uh, looking forward to it. It's really not the trailer right now that we put together is hot. We should put it as we go. Uh, we have a pilot that we just shot. It's about foster kids. It's uh, Breaking Bad meets uh, Yellowstone, uh, based around all boys foster home. And I have that in the, a pilot shot. I'm pitching that. I'm uh, in the process of trying to make an animation. Um, at the end of the day, I am going as fast as I can because I'm tired of waiting for the man. I want to be the man and stop waiting for the man. Uh, so here we are, and that's what uh, I'm going to continue making films. If, if I have to shoot it and pay for it myself, uh, I will get people in town who believe in me and believe in my product, and we will make a film for nothing. And, and, and at the end of the day, we make it. Right? And that's what I'm here for. That's why I want to make sure everyone out there knows don't wait around, be around, and do what you got to do. That's good. And you are based here in Vegas? Yes, we are based here in Vegas. Oh, that's even better. That's even better because the, it's networking. All of this is about networking and just trying to get people to come together because it's different ideas and everybody needs somebody to help. I, I literally have to say this. Vegas is amazing. Um, I know we're going to grow, uh, but I have a shoot coming up. I mean, this just happened last night. Uh -huh. I have a day coming up, a shoot day, where we have 50 plus actors showing up, 10 plus crew. I got cop cars, a uh, fire truck. I got canine unit. All of this, I'm all of this for nothing. It's all about just putting it out there and trying to just say, guys, let's do this. Yeah. Especially because it, the message of child trafficking, that helps. But it, it doesn't hurt, guys, just ask. Stop sitting around thinking you can't do something. You can. People out there want to make films, and they want to be a part of it. And if we all just work together, we can make films on our own. We don't need the big man. Yeah. But if everybody's big-headed, their egos, they want the credit, they want the credit. Everyone can get the credit if we all work together as a team. That sounds good. So, well, hopefully we can start from here and take bigger steps going forward. Um, I just want to say thank you. How did it, did you see it on the screen yet? Not on the big screen. No. Okay, so you got time to see it in a little bit. I want to talk to you later, see how you feel when you come out of it after watching it, because it gives you a whole different meaning when it's on the screen. On the big screen, you see the things you messed up. <laughs> I'll let you, you know hear you things up. differently. You're like, oh, snap. Oh, hey. yeah. But you know what? Um, with us judging movies, we've seen a lot of clean edits this year. So we probably did. Only you can tell it's a mistake. AI helps. <laughs> I'm just saying. I'm just saying. No more excuses. <laughs> well, thank you so much for taking the time to speak to me on the carpet. I look forward to talking to you on your way out. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
I mean, it's a, we have a very fruitful team and we're excited. How do you guys feel about your stuff going into the world, you know, seeing your things? How do you guys feel about that? We are very excited because we are not only collectively international, but some of these women up here who do things that are international. Um, and we just thank God for the opportunity to be able to provide a platform for women, especially black women. Um, and so our stories that we write, they're, they're collective stories, and it's um, to bring awareness to uh, communities and things that are happening in the world today because we want to make change. That's why we're here, to change society. <laughs> It makes us feel good because we're actually a traveling festival. So we've been to Atlanta, we've been to, of course, Houston, we've been to New Orleans, Louisiana, and now we're here in Las Vegas. And so we're excited about where we're going next. And so it just brings us joy to know that we stand, um, we stand as women here together in unity and harmony, um, making a difference. So does. It's very special today because we're actually, um, we went to the writer's room and we're premiering our trailer uh, this night, which is um, called Case Worker. We have the room, which is one of our writers, one of us. And these women are production crew, you know, they're all female production crew. And so we're excited to see it tonight. Um, my last question for you guys is because everybody has haters in the world, and everybody says we can't do it. How do you, how do you ignore that? Right. Who wants to ask that question? God. Patience, God, knowing your burden, knowing what you bring to the table, always executing, and just keeping the, the noise out. Once you focus on God, you focus on yourself, and you don't have time for them. They have time for you, okay? Yeah. That's Yes. Yeah. 
and excited about it. Can you come back, girl? Positive up here. <laughs> yes, hi. My name is Deirdre Gilbert, and I am a writer, executive producer of a film that uh, was played last night, The Unprincipled. And so, black women in film are the people who made that possible. So these black females here took this case and they went with it, and they are an awesome team. They travel, they do anything that's necessary. That lady that's standing in front, Ms. Joan, she is a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful coach. And I am just happy to be able to be part of the team. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Y'all already know how we do it here. We are live on location. We are at the 11th annual Las Vegas Black Film Festival. It is going down. I am the Pope Patricia Solstice, and I am so honored to be here to host the Orange Carpet, watching all these beautiful people coming here that is representing. What's your name? Chris. Chris, pleasure to have you here. Tell me, are you in one of these movies? Uh, I wrote and directed. I wrote and directed. Right on. What's the name of your movie? The director's cut. I dig it. So it's people all over the world that's going to be here checking out your film. What do you expect to get out of it? Um, I, I just want people to get like, a, a sense of, oh, what was different? Who's willing to go outside the box? So uh, that's all I'm hoping for. Just people just to understand the creativeness that uh, we took. That's what's up. It takes a lot of takes a lot of skills and creativity and blood, sweat, and tears that goes into all of this this work. And it's finally going to be on the big screen here for everybody to see. You said the director's cut. I love it. You guys, Chris, with the director's cut, can't wait to check out your work. carpet is in full effect right here at the Las Vegas, the Black Las Vegas, Las Vegas Black Film Festival. Let me get that right. Put some respect on that. I am Nicole Patrice. What is your name? J. Anthony. J. Anthony, you are here. What's your status here at the Black Film Festival? Well, I came to really support. I, was, I kept telling Ms. Michelle that I was going to really support. Actually, Ms. Michelle was in my office. Uh, my uh, uh, television show, uh, the Jay Anthony show. I interviewed her a couple of years ago. And I came to support her on the book for mentality what women need to know about men. And we have something that's in the making of this show. I yeah. dig it. And so you mentioned your podcast. Yes. What's the name of your podcast? The name of the podcast is Jay Anthony. It is. Jay Anthony. Okay. Uh, this is the voice of love. Jay yes. Anthony. I dig that as well. And so you're here to support the Black Film Festival as well. Absolutely. Uh, she has some incredible work out here. And people all over are coming to represent as well. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm so proud of her. I'm yeah. so proud of her. She seems like a good person. She really is. Well, enjoy yourself here. Thank you so much. All right. My pleasure. Once again, we are blessed with beauty on the orange carpet right here at the Las Vegas Black Film Festival. And we have none other than Queen Carrie Dillard. Um, the two little red hat demons. That's what's up now. Tell us a little bit about yourself in regards to the Black Film Festival. You've been supporting it for quite some time. Yes, uh, the first one that I came to see was uh, Is Dead Man Your Husband? And I've been coming for five years. This is the 11th annual, and I love it. I've been here yesterday, here today, and will be here tomorrow. If the Lord say the same. Oh, by the grace of God, nothing like blessed talent. And you're talented yourself. You guys have been doing your thing as well. So, uh, what type of relationship do you have with the founder of the Las Vegas Black Film Festival, Miss Michelle? Me and Ms. Michelle go back about 10 years, and I support her in everything that she does, along with Thomas Martin and Abani Christie in East Seattle. I just love you all. Oh, man, you said some star studies right there. I love every last one of them. Um, you guys go back like cornrows. You say, we go back 10 years. I got a track. That's what <laughs> Like an A-track, that's right. Well, I know she is proud to have you as a proud supporter, as a friend. Um, and I, I know you're going to enjoy yourself here tonight, as you always do. Thank you so much. Oh, my pleasure. Enjoy. God bless.
God bless you as well. Hi, I'm here to present the uh, um, 11th Annual Film, Black Film Festival here at the Sun Coast, and I am interviewing Jacqueline Glass, who is the executive producer of Sisters Getting Well, which was one of those documentaries that was like, I just want you to know that. Um, it had me think about the stuff I need to do in my life to get me together as well. So what made you come up with this? I know it was health reasons and all of that, but what made you turn into a power movement? So Sisters Getting Well is a documentary about the health and wellness of women of color black women. The film is a direct response to the film, They're Trying to Kill Us. I saw that documentary about two years ago, and it was Neo and Mia and uh, John Sally, and there were a number of celebrities that were in it, and it was a sound the alarm moment. So my journey corresponded with that film, and I said, okay, well this film, They're Trying to Kill Us, what are we going to do about it? What am I going to do about it? My story was written up in Black Enterprise about two years ago. 59-year-old woman reverses chronic disease, reverses diabetes, high blood pressure, hypertension, high cholesterol, hypothyroidism. The doctor wanted to put me on five different medications, but instead of taking the medications, I made the lifestyle changes needed so that I could be in the best optimum health. I just want you to know that you're gorgeous. So how long did it take to metamorphosize and then come up with this story? Because you didn't do them at the same time. First you had to go fake yourself. So I would say that it took a little while. Right after COVID, I started spending a lot of time in the Caribbean, in the San Martin, which is my happy place. And I started um, an organization called The Girlfriend Getaway, where I take 100 women to the different islands. We're in our fourth year this year. And what we do, we focus on health and wellness. We have speakers, we have um, you know, trainers, yoga instructors, we eat plant-based, we are healthy. And it's just to learn to reshift our focus, our mindset, and, you know, the goal is to extend our lives another 15 to 20 to 25 years. The documentary starts with a statistic that in the year of 2050, there will be 40% less African Americans in this country due, due to chronic disease. Their deaths will be due to chronic disease. And that's something that we can do something about. So this film is a sound the alarm moment. We are doing a national tour with the film. We just left Omaha, Nebraska, where the Urban League brought us out. We're headed to Chicago, Illinois, Trinity United Church of Christ. We're headed to the DMV International Film Festival in June. We are taking this film around the country. My co-executive producer is none other than Brandy Harvey. She is the daughter of Steve Harvey, and she is all things wellness. So what we do, we want to travel with this film. We want to show this film. Eventually, we want it to be a docu-series, because it's not just about women's health. It's about men's health. It's about children's health. But women are the ones that stir the pot. Women are the ones that make those meals in the kitchen. So if we as women can get healthy, everybody in the family is going to get healthy. Our friends are going to get healthy. Our community is going to get healthy. So what I do is I partner with Girl Trek and I partner with 40 Plus Double Dutch. Girl Trek is an organization started by two black women, Vanessa and Morgan. They have 1.3 million black women walking. They are doing the doggone thing. It's funny, everything that you just made, I am a part of. 40 Plus, 40 plus Double Dutch? Yes, I met them. Um, I'm a flight attendant, and I met them last year at the hotel um, in October. They were down in L.A., double dutching. I, I thought you probably met them in the airport, because they will bring out a yes, set of ropes. Yes, they will bring out those ropes in an airport, and they also have a documentary called Beyond the Rope. Okay. Pamela Pell Robinson and Katrina Dyer Taylor, they have a documentary that they have done, you know, documenting their journey. So my thing is, we are not in competition. We come together.
together as organizations, we come together to spread the word. One of, of the stars of our film is Lisa Smith. And last night we had several hundred women on a Zoom call and explaining to them the five biggest mistakes that people make in going plant-based. And she broke it down so that it will forever be broken. <laughs> yes, so we expect double that number in our Zoom webinar next month. We want to build this wellness community from the ground up. We want to women to have an opportunity for some place to go to have their questions answered. And also a community that will hold them accountable Okay. And following through. That's what I love about Girl Trek. If you don't feel like walking, somebody's going to knock on your door, hey sis, you want to go to a full walk. Because it is evidence that if you walk three days a week for 30 minutes, that will elongate your life by 10 years. Yes. That's 10 years. Yes. Yes. So, my last question for you is, um, when you said that all these entities come together, is there a site for everybody, or everybody has different sites, or is there a way to, to get a part of this Zoom so that others can get the information as well that they're not privy to watching the film? So everyone has their own organization, everyone has their site. There is a phone number, which is probably in my phone, but if, you, if, if anyone wants to be a part of this Zoom discussion, they can email me at reb as in Victor, glass, okay. at gmail.com. Rev, like Reverend, Rev Glass, at gmail.com, and I will make sure they have this information to be a part of our wellness community and get the information that is going to not only save their lives, but cause them to have a better quality of life. This film is dedicated to my mother, who died of uncontrolled diabetes five years ago here in Las Vegas. This film is dedicated to two of my sisters, one who died of breast cancer, the other who died of colon cancer. If we had this information, if we're able to come together and change these lifestyles, we're going to be living our best life. Yes. I'm going on 61 in June. I've never felt better. And you look amazing, and I can't wait to be like you when I grow up. I can't wait to be like Chef Bobette. Chef Bobette is 73, yes. and she is doing it there in California. So I see her, and I see those are my goals, Chef Bobette. So when you leave here in Vegas, what's your next stop, your next tour? So when we leave here, let's see, my next stop is St. Martin to get a little bit of rest. I'm gonna go with you. So my sister Mindy, who's over there in this video, and she's gonna be accompanying me and we're gonna take a little rest break and then we come back and we'll be going to uh, Chicago, Illinois, Wisconsin, and then to the DMV. Your forever fans talking to you. I can't wait to see what more you have to give and share with us. I want to thank you for taking the time to meet me on the carpet and discuss your project. And I wish y'all all the best in St. Mark. I already know you're going to take care of each other. Thank you so much for the interview. Your questions were really wonderful. Thank and you. You made me feel very comfortable with people. Oh. And I'm very thankful and grateful. Thank you. You have a wonderful day. I'll see you soon. Y'all right. know how we do it. Look at what we have on the orange carpet here at the Las Vegas Film Black Black Las Vegas Film Festival. Now, look, you guys look incredible. You look like you are about to do something or have done something. Let us know who you are and what you're thinking right here on the Las Vegas Black Film Festival. Well, first of all, thank you so much. My name is Renee Peoples. And this is our son, Bryson Peoples, and my husband. I'm not Bryson. <laughs> Bobby Peoples. Um, we are uh, the People's Film Company, People's Network now. And um, Bryson here was in the film. He played young Kevin in High Gold Kid. Um, so, and he's very shy, so I decided, I was like, okay, I'm gonna get you on the video, whether you say something or not. We're gonna get you in there. Also, tomorrow, well, it's going to be dated by the time this comes out, but on Saturday we will be teaching the film making portion of the workshop on uh, Saturday morning. So that's what we're going to be doing. Now, the people, for the people, <laughs> you guys have been doing some amazing work yourself. I
I mean, you guys have some great films out. Um, and I know you are a proud supporter of Miss Michelle as well as she is of you all. And I just have to say the collaboration is incredible with so much talent that flows here through Las Vegas and upbringing all this talent that needs to be seen and heard. I just have to tip my hat to you guys. You guys are doing such a phenomenal job. Well, thank you so much. Thank you. And you are a beautiful host. Thank you so much for having us here on the Orange Carpet. My pleasure. And to Miss Michelle and everybody that's helping her out, congratulations on another year. Well done. We are so proud of you. And of course, we have your back 100%. So thank you so much. I'm <laughs> uh -uh. I love it. He, he reserved all that oh energy for the show. I mean, he put it all in and it, it left him with nothing. Right. That's, that's what I'm here. <laughs> Thank you so much for hanging out with me and enjoy the film. Thank you. My Thank pleasure. You. Thank you so much. <laughs> One day. Somebody come take a look at this. Somebody take a look at this. The orange carpet right here at the Las Vegas Black Belt Festival is being blessed with none other than Mila. This is your debut, boo boo. Yeah, Lori, I learned to cry like 50 times. <laughs> Look, baby, we were all cried out. Ooh, Ooh. yes, it feels like that. Like yes. This. But you know what? The work is done. The work is done. Let everybody know exactly what you got going on today. And before you do that, I want to congratulate you on your, congratulate you for last year for winning the Your name, man. What, what, what 
Tell me about it, and what's your role? My name is Deontay Finch. Um, none of the films I am playing here tonight. I have a lot of other kinds of films, Life of the Boy, uh, I'm for. Uh, I'm also doing a live show, Battle Box to Strike the Nine. Okay. Battle Box Screen, about oh. five times a week. Okay. So I've just been on about 35 years of years about this. Nice. Um, all right, so your
first sister Lila that I directed and we are nominated for four awards, including directorial debut. Thank you. 
and you're phenomenal in every last one of them that I've shared. Again, I've done a movie with you as well. We were sisters in kids' clothes. And I gotta say, you are all about it. You know, I got to bring it. Had to bring it. <laughs> well, congratulations on this journey as well. And I know a future endeavor for in store for you. You're so beautiful. You know, it's not many times I look up to a woman. <laughs> I'll be just shocked to everybody else how it turns out. Well, let's be shocked together. Yes, <laughs>
Thank you. 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 Thank you.